<laughs> Thank you very much. So my name is Robert Gilmer. I founded Shiny Nine Web Design, and the first time that I used Genesis, I hated it. And that's a weird way to start a presentation that's ostensibly pro-Genesis, uh, but I'm a weird kind of guy. By the way, if you guys know, know, if you guys recognize that Land of Confusion is a Genesis song title, that's what I was going for. <laughs> exactly, the, the video with the puppets and yeah, anyway. So I hated Genesis the first time I used it, but a lot of that was situational. I had just started freelancing for a company and they had a client come in with a pre-built website, so the company didn't build it. Client wanted some simple stuff. They wanted a sidebar moved to the other side. They wanted to remove the title. Pretty simple stuff, and I'm eager to impress them. I'm eager to impress the company. I said, sure, I can have that done by the end of the day. That stuff's easy. So I open up the single.php. I'm looking for you know the underscore title. I'm looking for git underscore sidebar. I'm looking for all that sort of stuff. And all I see staring back at me is this. <laughs> Where the hell is everything? <laughs> Just go forth and Genesis, apparently. So that left a bad taste in my mouth. I had to quickly figure out how to use Genesis and how to, how to deal with it and how it was different. And because I was under a deadline and because it was something that I had to do very quickly, I didn't really assimilate any of it. I went on you know, uh, Stack Exchange, I looked up how to do stuff and I just did it but I didn't grok any of it. But then the second time, the second time I used Genesis, I hated it then too. <laughs> Largely the same sort of situation. I went into it knowing that it was a Genesis site and knowing that I was gonna have to pick up on it. And again, deadlines and again, uh, pressure and uh, didn't really get into it. But then the third time, I know this is like that Monty Python bit with the castles and stuff. The third time, I actually enjoyed Genesis. I actually chose to do it. I rebuilt my own site in Genesis. And the reason I was jazzed about it, I'd gone to a meetup. This is about two years ago. John Hawkins down in Las Vegas put on a presentation at our meetup about Genesis. And I walked in very skeptical. I said to John, you know, John's a buddy of mine. I knew him. I said to him, there's no way you're going to make me a convert. You're going to show Genesis, I'm going to go, eh, and that'll be it. And then sure enough, the way he explained it and a particular plugin that he showed me, it was an epiphany. It was a light bulb moment for me. And finally, I understood what makes Genesis special, what sets it apart, and what makes it powerful. And that's what I'm here to share with you guys. Uh, a lot of people in this audience, you're probably where I was two, two years ago. You've heard of Genesis, you know kind of the idea behind it, but you don't know what the big deal is. You don't know why everybody raves about Genesis and why that name gets dropped all the time. Uh, and I'm hoping to share my epiphany with you so you walk out of here and go, oh, I get it now. Uh, by the way, I just recently learned that I can control Keynote with my iPhone, and I also found out that I can do laser pointers <laughs> and mark on the thing and everything, and I'm gonna do it just because I can. <laughs> For no other, just because it's cool. <laughs> anyway, all right, so Genesis, for those that don't know, Genesis is a theme framework. And if you ask 100 developers what the word framework means, you will get 101 different responses. So here's mine. Think of Genesis as a parent theme. Now, parent and child themes are pretty straightforward, pretty common, but one of the differences is there's a lot of child themes for this parent theme. Several different companies release child themes. Uh, Studio Press, of course. Studio Press is the people who build Genesis. They also release their own uh, child themes. A couple other people, uh, Web Savvy Studios, and, uh, and we'll talk about how many others. Um, so that's one of the differences. That's what makes it a framework more so than just a parent or child, is that there's more than one child theme. And there's a lot of child themes. Studio Press themselves has 33. Now I've got an asterisk there because it's actually on their site, you'll find 38. But five of them aren't HTML5, so I kind of wouldn't recommend using them. Uh, one nice thing is all 33 or 38 of them are mobile responsive now. A year ago when I gave this talk, some of them weren't. So StudioPress has gone in and updated a lot of things. Um, but 
I would say 33 themes that you would want to use because you should stay away from the ones that don't have HTML5. Uh, Web Savvy Marketing, I call them out because they're probably the second biggest. I mean, they've got 37, so technically they're biggest, but uh, they're probably the second biggest person who distributes Genesis themes other than StudioPress themselves. And then Genesis on their site has a recommended developer list. 24 devs on that site, 100 themes total. So part of what makes it a framework is there's so many child themes to choose from. And there's a huge variety in child themes, which makes sense. If you have 100 different child themes, they're all going to look different. And when you create a standard child theme, let's say you're using 2014, 2015, whatever, and you, you create a child theme from them, that child theme starts out looking like 2015. And then you modify, you make whatever changes you want to the style or the, the template, uh, the coding or whatever. Um, and you end up deviating from 2015. Well, Genesis child themes, because there's so many of them, they all look vastly different than the original. So you have a, a wide variety of places as a developer, as a person creating your own website, as anyone in this room, you have a wide variety of starting points to build your unique look from. The thing, though, that makes it really a framework is how many hooks there are. Now, for the programmers in the room, they know what hooks are. Uh, hooks are spots in the execution of WordPress of a plugin or of a theme that lets you modify, lets you add functionality in, lets you modify what the site is default going to do and make some changes, remove things, that sort of thing. Um, and this is more so than the other stuff, more so than the child themes and the wide variety therein. This is what makes it a framework because it gives you so many awesome ways to modify the software. So there is, this is where we're getting into the plugin that John Hawkins showed me. This website has a static layout of the hooks. This plugin can be put onto your Genesis site and we'll show you exactly where these hooks are. So let me do a quick demo. Let's see how well this works being multiple screens and stuff. There we go. That actually worked well. And then that happened. Control Shift M, not Control Shift N. Oh well. All right. So this is a site that I built with Genesis, and that really was not a good idea. Stand by. All right. Well, you have to look at it non-minimized, non-maximized. So this is a site I built in Genesis. This is the plugin, and it running now. Be, by default, this is actually orange boxes rather than red. I made it red to stand out more on the screen. Each one of these is a different hook, and you can tie functions onto whatever hook you want. This lets you see at a glance the hook name that you need. So, for instance, if I wanted to put something above this menu, I would go, "Oh, okay. I probably need to tie it in." It's probably a little too blurry for you to read. That's Genesis header right. So looking at this plugin, I go, OK, I get it now. This is how this is laid out. These are all the hooks. This is what I tie into. And this is what I used to be in particular you know, point of the page. If I wanted stuff in the footer, you know, Genesis before footer, that sort of thing. So this is one of the things that made me go, oh, I get it now. This is awesome. The plugin is, and these are available on uh, Slide Deck. I'll, there'll be a link to Slide Deck at the end. Uh, the plugin is the one on the bottom. The website on the top is just a static view of that on, on the developer's own site rather than yours. This plugin lets you see exactly on your Genesis theme where these hooks are, where they fire, and that sort of thing. So using hooks like this, if you think about your WordPress website as kind of like a block of Legos, using hooks, you can move things around, stuff some other stuff in there. Maybe you want to put a call to action above your main content. You can change the color. You can change things that are existing. You can even remove stuff. And then once you're done with your Legos, because I'm a fan of the Lego movie, you can get in your spaceship. Oh, the sound doesn't go through. 
<laughs> if you haven't seen the movie, this is like my favorite scene. Oh, and I hit the button. Oh, well, that was it. <laughs> He's been waiting the whole movie to build the damn spaceship. Anyway. All right, all right, tell that. So one of the differences, one of the key things to think about, and one of the things that people have a lot of trouble with when they come to terms with Genesis, a lot of themes are written from a markup perspective. And this is probably because, you know, 25 years ago we were building websites in Dreamweaver, and all we had was markup. All we had was HTML. So in a standard, I think I got this from 2014, this code, you'll notice most of it's just regular HTML. We open up PHP when we need it, but we close it off immediately. We were like, oh, PHP is too dangerous. I'm going to close it off, and then we're going to go back to, to markup. Genesis takes the exact opposite approach. Genesis treats everything like a function. Genesis looks at the world. Genesis is written by PHP developers for PHP developers. And there are better ways to do this. I didn't want to get into output buffering and stuff. But this is an entire uh, PHP function. We don't break out of PHP at all for any of this. And this is how I would uh, put in a header in this particular instance. Um, so again, standard themes. When I, when I say standard themes, I mean non-genesis, non-thesis. Thesis is another framework. Canvas is a framework. Uh, standard themes are just regular HTML themes, and they call PHP when they're needed. And the Genesis does everything pretty much through PHP. It's the difference between just writing the word hello world and creating a function that echoes hello world and running that function. That's the concept. Genesis loves functions. Genesis will do things this way rather than just blah, here's some content. Genesis will wrap it up as a function. So to really show this off, to really get into the specifics, I'm going to go through some case studies that are hopefully not going to be too boring. Uh, but let's say you wanted to add a byline after the title in your blog, you know, by such and such person. Well, in a standard theme, you would probably find something like this. It might have a class. It might have some other stuff. But it would look kind of like this. You'd find this, and you'd put in the code that you want to put in. All right, by the author, you know, make it H2, whatever. Not counting white space, not counting name spacing. This adds one more line. This adds 34 more bytes to your file. All right. The Genesis way, you're going to write a function. You're going to say echo such and such, but just having the function isn't enough. You also have to say, I want this function to run at this point, uh, Genesis entry header. And you would find that point from that plugin I showed you uh, would say exactly where to run it. This adds four more lines. This adds 150 more bytes. Now, I'm going to emphasize the difference in the amount of code that gets added. And the way I'm going to talk about it, you're going to think it's anti-Genesis, but later on, you'll find out it really isn't. So to do the same thing this way it takes a little more code. Now, let's say instead of maybe I don't want to add any, uh, a byline, maybe I just want to change my H1 tags to H2 tags. Maybe I got some SEO reason that I don't want an H1 on my site. I don't know. I'm not an SEO guy. I don't know. In a standard theme, you just find this line and change the H1 to an H2. This is zero more lines. This is zero extra code. <laughs> Everything stays the same. Genesis, you have to, and there's a way you can do this with filters. I wanted to do this with actions instead, because uh, they're easier to understand, easier to talk about. You remove the action. You say to Genesis, I don't want you to do the built-in thing that you're, that you're going to do by default, which is do the post title, which is the H1 tags. No, no, no. Remove that action. I want you to do this function instead. This function is the same, except it's got H2 rather than H1. And I want you to run this function at that point. Again, Genesis entry header. This is a whopping five more lines and 214 more bytes, as opposed to zero and zero. Um, now, that remove action, and again, this will be in the, um, in the quotes at the end, the slide deck. John Hawkins put together a great, like, 
any action you would ever want to remove from Genesis is on this man's list at that address. Uh, if you want to take a picture now or we'll just move on because it'll be in the slide deck as well. All right, so third case study. Let's say I just want to get rid of the title entirely. I don't want a title at all. I don't know why, but I don't want my title at all. So in a standard theme, I would find this line and I'd just erase it. One less line, 30 less bytes. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, Robert, you can count the number of lines. You can count the number of bytes. You should use the word fewer and not less. I'm OK with that. First of all, I like the way less sounds. And second of all, no one in this room was actually thinking that. It's just people like me that know when you use the word fewer and when, the word you, when you use the word less. Because I'm a nerd like that. So to make this change in Genesis, you have to, well, how, many of the folks in here have probably either been laid off or known somebody who's been laid off. And you always get pulled into the office and the asshole middle manager is sitting there with you. <laughs> And he's going to say all kinds of things like, you know, we're moving in a different direction or whatever. Not, not that this has ever happened to me. <laughs> but one of the things that that asshole middle manager might say is addition by subtraction. The concept is we're adding to the value of the company by subtracting you. <laughs> okay. you wow. Um, this is kind of the opposite. This is subtraction by addition. In order to remove the title, in order to keep Genesis from doing what it by default wants to do, I have to add more code. I have to add one more line. I have to add 65 more bytes. It's a little counterintuitive, but you're, you're preventing a default. So you're adding code to stop something from happening. So just looking at these numbers again, just to get them all in one place. There's not going to be a quiz later. Don't worry about the numbers. Again. Looking at the way, do I acknowledge you? I, I'm so confused. People say yes, people say no. <laughs> yeah, do I, do I? Okay. I, you know, whatever. All right, fine. So, so looking at these numbers, you might think that I'm anti-Genesis because I'm really emphasizing the fact that Genesis takes more code. But in reality, let's look at the starting point. Let's look at the single.php for 2015. The single.php is 48 lines, a little over 1,500 bytes. 2014 is that many lines, whatever. 2013 is that many lines. With Genesis, if there are no changes, your single.php doesn't even exist. It doesn't need to exist. So literally, you're starting from zero. But if you wanted to make changes to like a single.php, you would start off by creating this. And this file is two lines. This line is 16 bytes. And these are three of the big ones, uh, Agency Press, News Theme, and Enterprise. All three of them don't even have the single.php to begin with. So instead of starting from 48 lines and adding some code or subtracting some code or whatever, you're starting from such a small footprint that the fact that you're adding more code than you would the other way is negligible because it's still such a clean, tight file that only has the changes that you need. Everything else is handled by the Genesis backend very well. It's handled very elegantly by Genesis. So again, that's why I mention these numbers is because it's a diff difficult concept, but uh, counterintuitive at the very least. All right, so obviously I'm a pro. Uh, I'm, for Genesis. I'm not a pro at Genesis, but I am for Genesis. I, I think it's great. It's good if, you're, if that's your skill set. If you're a PHP developer and you don't want to waste time with markup or whatever, this is a really good thing, really good thing for you to learn. Uh, if you are a developer, it's one, more quiver, it's one more arrow in your quiver. It's one more thing that you can say to potential clients, to potential partners, business partners that you meet up with, you can say, yes, I can do Genesis. I can work on Genesis sites. So it's a good thing in that regards. Um, it's a great starting point. Literally hundreds of child themes to start from and then to build off of. There is a huge, oh, continuity, not community. So that snippet of code that I showed you earlier about how to remove the post title or how to make it an H2 tag or whatever, 
I can probably take that one snippet of code and drop it into any one of Studio Press's 30 plus themes and it'll work just the same way. So now instead of having to know how to tweak 2015, but oh, 2014's a little different, so I have to do this instead. One line of code pretty much works on most Genesis themes. So that's a great time saver if you do a lot of site building. Um, reliability, the Genesis themes are coded really well because the Genesis backend is coded really well. It's really a strong platform uh, and you're not gonna get a lot of wasted code. You're not gonna get a lot of uh, yeah, that sort of stuff. And then the community. There are all kinds of people. I learned last week there's a Genesis Slack channel, for those of you who use Slack. Uh, I joined it, I've been reading through it. Uh, it's really kind of awesome. If you, if you Google it, um, you have to like request, but then they'll send you an email and you'll just get added to the Slack channel. Great resource if you have um, Genesis questions. There are people in this industry, um, Carrie Dills for instance. Carrie Dills is friggin' brilliant. She has forgotten more about Genesis than I know. Um, it, it, she's got all kinds of articles, all kinds of things. You can even reach out, you know, ping her on Twitter and ask her questions, and she will sometimes answer. I don't want to promise, you know, I don't know her schedule. Um, but there are all kinds of people, all kinds of things that you can turn to to get your Genesis questions answered. But I like presenting uh, both sides of the story, so I'm going to talk a little bit about why you might not want to use Genesis. Even though I obviously do, you might not want to. Again, it comes down to skill set. If you're not that comfortable with PHP, if you're not that comfortable with functions, if you'd rather just open and close a div rather than writing a function that opens and closes a div, you may not want to go down the Genesis path until you, you know, maybe you get your PHP skill set better. Uh, there is a learning curve because this is another set of hooks, another set of functions, another set of stuff to learn. It raises your marketability if you're a developer like me, but it's one more set of stuff to learn. New technologies. So I, I almost hesitate to mention this, but it is important to mention. Um, all right, so those of you who know, uh, not, not mobile first, the other one, Responsive Web Design by Ethan Marcotte is one of the Bibles, one of the best books you can read about responsive web design. He, he literally wrote the book on it. He wrote that book in 2009. It wasn't until 2011, Genesis 2.0 was really mobile friendly, was really responsive. And I don't necessarily cite them for that because Genesis is a behemoth. It takes a lot to build those kinds of changes into it. But it is something to be aware of. Sometimes they're a little slower to, to um, incorporate new technology. There isn't a single Studio Press theme right now that has built-in SAS, SAS partials. Now, of course, I can take a, a theme and write my own, you know, go through the styles.css and, and separate it out the way I want to in SAS partials. For those of you who don't know, SAS is a CSS thing. It's a preprocessor. It's the future of CSS. It's awesome. Um, but I would like, yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, I would like some of the themes to have that right out of the box so I can work from it and build off of it and not just have, you know, the style.css, which has all this stuff and then my own set of partials, but that's me. Um, but they are a little slower in adopting new technology because it's a big behemoth of a, of a thing. Uh, and the final thing is design similarity, especially if you look through the Studio Press themes. There's a lot of similarity. There's a very Genesis-y look to it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's a good look. But if you're looking for something that's way outside the box, you may have to not start with a Genesis theme, a studio theme. You may just have to roll your own theme or you may not use Genesis at all. Now the counter to that argument is if there isn't a Genesis theme that looks like your mock-up, like if you're trying to do something that far out of the box, Maybe your idea isn't a good one. Maybe it's too far out of the box, you know? Uh, but that's, you can argue either side of that. But if you want something that's really, really different looking, you may have to do a little more coding or you may have to not use Genesis at all. So, but that's, um, that's that. All right, so one last question, or one last request rather for me, and then I'll open it up to questions. Um, there's a plugin 
If you don't want to mess around with, uh, with P, well, you have to mess around with PHP. If you don't want to mess around with FTP or SFTP or Git or anything like that, there's a great plugin which allows you to enter these snippets of code through the back end. So you don't have to worry about SFTP, that sort of thing, anything like that. That's the link to it. I'll show this plugin really quickly. Uh, 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 everything is backwards and upside down. There we go. So I don't know how well you can see that. So this gives you, through the back end, this gives you the ability to drop in your PHP comments to remove this, to add that, to do anything that you want to do like that. So this is an alternative to SFTP, FTP. Everybody should be using SFTP. I don't, but I should. Uh, <laughs> I'm really bad about that. Um, but anyway. So you can use this plugin. That's perfectly fine. It's a great plugin. It's very well written. And then everything goes away. All right. So you can use that plugin. It's great. And if you don't want to use that plugin and you just want to make the changes through, I guess that really should say FTP rather than PHP. If you want to do this stuff through FTP and SFTP, you can do that too. That's great. That's wonderful. Don't do both at the same time. It makes baby Jesus weep. <laughs> the, reason, the reason I say this, so I was working on a site once. I inherited it from another developer. And there was something I wanted to change. And I looked through all the code. I've got programs that look through the, through the files, downloaded it to my computer. You know, use Sublime Text to look through, looking for this snippet of code, trying to find out, okay, well, what file has this? Couldn't find it anywhere. So I downloaded the themes, the, the plugins directory, thinking, okay, well, maybe that's getting inserted by a plugin. Looked through each and every one of the plugins, couldn't find the, the theme, the code that I wanted to change there either. So I eventually did a dump of the database, looked through the database for the code I was trying to change, and finally found it and realized that it was in that plugin. So some of the stuff I needed to do was in files. Some of the stuff I needed to do was in the database. And I had to remember, oh, if I wanted to change this, I have to go here instead of here. It's a pain in the butt. If you're using one or the other, use one or the other. Please don't use both. As a developer, you will thank yourself in the future. And any future developers that work on your site will thank you as well. So uh, I guess I'm tearing through this because we're at that point. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Does this make sense, the, the, the cardinal difference? Yeah, now are you really raising your hand this time? You're not faking me out? Okay, All right. <laughs> What's up? This is my first time being exposed to Genesis. So this, Bless you. this might be a silly question. No silly questions. Is price-wise, is there an entry point for Genesis? There is, I don't remember the price offhand, but we can pull it up. It's like $50 if you want just Genesis. And if you're a developer and you want the developer pack, it's like $150, but then you get all 30 some odd. 350 these days. 350 all right. It's been a while since I paid for it. I bought the developer license ages ago, and I guess it just uh, Genesis theme pricing. No, and that's a great question. There is, Genesis is a paid, OK, so for the framework itself, it's 400, and, uh, 400. it's $45. Uh, but then apparently about 300 to get the framework and everything else. Uh, if you're a good PHP guy, you could get just the framework and do your own thing based off of it. There are free themes from GitHub that you can download, starter themes to build off of. Um, or you might buy a la carte one or two sites uh, along with the framework and do it that way. Or you get the developer thing and you get all of them. And that's, if you're a developer, it's the way to go. Yes, ma'am. So I have the Genesis framework and I have a child theme. Okay. I was in the previous workshop this morning about creating child themes from your theme. I get this question every time. It changes. Yeah. So do I need to do that if I have my? So your question for, for the camera and everything. Um, so the question is, how do you deal with Genesis child themes? Because the child themes get, get updates as well as the parent theme. 
you can do one of two things. You can wrap your CSS and your functionality changes into a plugin and leave your child theme, let's say Enterprise Pro, leave your child theme completely untouched and then update the child theme if and when there's an update. But the kind of the better answer is if you were to take, I use Enterprise Pro a lot. I don't know why I like the look of it. I take it and I rename it and I make it totally separate. So A, it takes it out of the update cycle anyway. So I'm not going to accidentally overwrite my changes because I've essentially forked it. Um, I take it out because the updates that the individual child themes are going to get are mostly cosmetic. Mostly cosmetic, mostly aesthetic, mostly just the look of the site. Um, if there's a big change, Genesis will usually release a whole different thing. Like there used to be Enterprise. Now there's Enterprise Pro because it's mobile responsive. Um, but the minor updates that they, you won't miss them. You won't miss them not doing it. But update Genesis on a regular basis. Update the parent theme because that's the functionality. That's the security. That's patching up any holes. Update that no matter what. But if you have a child theme and there's an update available and you're afraid of wiping out, I wouldn't worry too much about applying that update because it's almost certainly just cosmetic. I get that question a lot. That's, okay. that's not, don't, don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I've been talking about the last 45 minutes. Where have you been? Did you come in late? <laughs> no, that's all right. So far, I'm seeing a lot more PHP words, but I'm not seeing Well, the, the pros are, is I got more into PHP coding and just um, the eureka moment, A, was seeing this plugin and realizing that there are essentially breakpoints throughout the site. And oh, OK, I hook onto this. It's, it demystified it. Uh, and then the other thing was to abandon the idea of opening up a child theme, opening up single.php, finding my header tags, and making those changes. That's all totally behind the scenes. That's in Genesis proper. Um, I'm not going to, I have to overwrite that if I want to, but not by making the changes, just by doing it by functions. So really, it, it's that mindset of instead of writing hello world, write a function that echoes hello world. That was my eureka moment. So I guess I failed communicating that to you guys. Yes, sir. Well, I, I mean, I have not used Genesis. It's on really, me. Except for on like maybe one or two projects. And, and I personally prefer to write my, you know, write my own themes apart from Genesis. Right. Now, I just kind of picked up on it that you're not having to repeat your code because you're putting them in via those hooks, right? Right. So you have an H2, it's going to change it across 50 files. Well, yes and no. Okay, so what he's asking is, is this doing it the Genesis way, is that essentially making it so I don't repeat myself? And in all honesty, the answer is the answer that you get for a lot of WordPress stuff. It depends. <laughs> if I were to put that little snippet of code in my single.php, it's only going to fire when I view single posts. <coughs> if I put it in my functions.php, It'll fire across the site. I could put it in my functions.php and wrap it in a conditional, you know, if is singular, then remove this and do this other thing. This is not in Genesis or is this in Genesis? This is in my Genesis child theme. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is in the child theme. I can put it in a number of different places. I can put it in a functionality plugin as well. Depending on where I put it and whether or not I wrap it in a conditional, it will apply where I want it to. Does that make sense? No, yeah. And, and what I'm asking, yeah. I guess maybe, I think, uh, because I'm thinking you're writing these functions in your function.php. I know you can put in a functionality plugin as well, right. but I'm just thinking like you could apply this globally as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that, it, almost always, that particular hook name shows up on all the different pages. So if you, thank you, five. So that's, that's a benefit. Yeah, yeah, it is a benefit because it applies across the board. Uh, it, let's not do page titles, let's do like sidebars. If you put a remove function, remove action to get rid of a sidebar, and you put it in your functions and you have no conditionals around it, every single page, you know, page, single, archive, whatever, 
gets the sidebar removed. Yeah. So yes, it is universal in that regard. That's a better example for that. Uh, yeah. Right. I mean, again, uh, seems like it's the same kind of thing, action-based, or yeah, it. Approach? So his question is, how is this different in terms of, you know, the the approach for making layout changes for the site? Uh, and the answer is, yeah, it's it is more function-based. So instead of, like, let's say you had a 2015 and you wanted to do two columns, you would go into page.php and you you know you do the divs for your two columns. In Genesis, you'll write a function that echoes those divs and then tie that function to the right place. Um, and what's nice about it is then if there are things you don't want to run it on, instead of finding the code, the relevant code, and deleting it all or commenting it out or whatever, you just do a remove action. Remove action, my custom columns from the hook, and you get, you get rid of it that way. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's just say you start with the Genesis feed and five years from now you want to go to another framework. How difficult is it to migrate? Okay. How difficult is it to migrate from Genesis to another framework or to another theme down the line? I would say no more difficult than migrating from anything else. You know, if you're using 2015 and two years from now you're like, oh, I like this theme from Elegant Themes, it's going to be the same amount. Um, Genesis doesn't have a lot of short codes built in, so you don't have to worry about removing that. And if you build custom pages, I would always, no matter what you're using, Genesis, Thesis, 2015, doesn't matter, any custom pages that you create, you always want to take out of the theme and put in a custom functionality plugin. So that if you do change your theme, you don't lose your employees or your awards, custom post types, or whatever it is you've, you've created. Does that make sense? So really, no difference between Genesis and any other theme. Yes, sir. How would you compare using general Genesis with specifically Make Plus, but other kinds of frameworks like that, where Make Plus is really just a, a drag and drop visual interface? And so, I mean, besides the fact that Genesis is all PHP and something like Make Plus is just a very visual. Right. Drag and drop. I mean, there's any reason for one versus the other? Well, I'm not very familiar with Make Plus, but I assume it's similar to things like uh, Beaver Builder and uh, Visual Composer. No, yes. It's just a very fine grained It's a it's a page builder, and there's a okay. lot of built-in things that you can and do. There's like a gallery. There's it does not use shortcodes. Oh wow, that's awesome. And it's just all drag and drop. I would. Not okay. So his question is, how does Genesis and, and building sites with it compare to something like Make Make Plus? Was that plus. Make Plus? Okay, uh, I'd have no frame of reference for it, but I would ask: Does Make Plus let you? Is Make Plus more content based? Like this is how I style the content on this page, or is it more layout based? Like oh, on an archive page, I don't want a sidebar. It's, it's layout based. But okay. It's layout per page. Layout layout per page. Okay, so all the functionality is in a plugin rather than a theme. Honestly, I, I have no frame of reference. There's, there's a theme called Make, and then the plugin is a premium plugin called Make Plus, just adds more stuff to okay. it. Okay. Um, I actually was torn between Genesis and Make Plus, but my designer, who was desperately afraid of PHP, <laughs> it, Okay. Okay, so he's he's recommending Make Plus. Make, I'm sorry, Make is the theme. Make Plus is a plugin that adds some extra functionality, including a page builder to it. Um, it sounds great. I'll actually take a look at it. I don't. Know, I have no frame of reference though. It's, it's cool. I don't know that I recommend it. It's cool. It works. It's right. Kind of a couple production sites, but you know, I wondering if there's something I'm missing the boat because maybe you can have a much more fine grained approach with this if you like to have all these hooks that you can break into. I think so. And what I what I like about Genesis is that it's very. It, it, if I come up with a, with, a, with a function that does what I want it to do on this site, I can apply it over to this site or this site, because I use it for more, more than one site. If you've got only the one site that you're building for yourself, maybe make is a better choice. Uh, this is more developer-y, more agency-y, I guess. And then, so. so in Genesis, your entire personal theme, your entire product theme is really nothing but, but uh, functions. functions. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's saying essentially in a Genesis child theme, all you've got is a bunch of functions, and that's absolutely true. You've got style, I mean, 
You've got CSS, yes. You've got CSS, but all the all the markup is usually delivered from function, or almost always delivered from functions instead. So, do I have time for one more? One more. All right. I, uh, well, you may or may not be able to answer this, but uh, I'm just kind of trying to figure out, like, ultimately the benefit, you know, for me and some other realms. But uh, so, am I? If I assume that manipulating a document object model. Uh, Ooh, yeah, look at that. Well, like mobile, you know, you said that it took them a while to get to mobile, so I'm kind of assuming that if we're, like you're just saying, that you're really looking at a bunch of hooks and PHP in the genesis, I'm assuming that maybe the document object model is manipulated at that level as well. Okay. So he's talking about the document object model and uh, JavaScript, and is that how Genesis is doing it? Genesis actually isn't using JavaScript in that regards for it. Uh, the mobile changes that they made when they went into Genesis 2.0 are strictly CSS-based, uh, media query stuff. Um, but what I like about it is instead of having, let's say, 10 files, single.php, archive.php, whatever, whatever, instead of having a bunch of files with a bunch of markup in it, you have only the files you need and you have only the modifications that you need. And that's what I like about it. Uh, does that answer your question? I mean, it doesn't really change the DOM so much. I mean, it sounds a little potentially cleaner to me than a lot of other I think so. so yeah. Yeah, it is cleaner because it all happens server side because it's all PHP. And then what gets served up is, is better, I think. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.